Hi, this is Josh with Time Lapse Cameras here to give you a general overview of all aspects of the Ifitis ATL200 camera operation. We have a Samsung Galaxy tablet and the Ifitis camera. First things first, we need to connect to the Wi Fi. With a long press, turn the camera on until you hear a long beep, then go to your device's Wi Fi settings. You're going to select the camera network. There it is. ATL200 is the ATL200 camera. The first time it will ask you for a password. The password is 12345678. Now it's connected and we go to the camera app. You've got camera, gallery, and firmware. We'll get into the gallery and firmware in a later video. So now it brings up a live preview of the scene and you've got some basic camera settings. Frames per second, we're always at 30 frames per second. This is your time interval. You can choose any capture interval you want here. If you're doing a short project, you have faster capture intervals. If you're doing a longer project, you might be a minute, two minutes, maybe even five minutes. Here's the quality. Our quality setting is always on four. If you were doing a traffic study or something and really needed to conserve uh, card space, you could drop the quality, but we're always at four. This is your scene, auto, daylight, and star. We're typically in auto. Daylight would be good for day. Star is great for night. Here you've got different resolutions, HD or full HD. This is 1080 or 720. This is a 16 by 9 or a square crop preview. This is really handy for Instagram where you can achieve a perfect square crop. So I could frame the camera up here perfectly for an Instagram square, but I could still record in 16 by 9 format for YouTube or other social media. That's the main app screen page. It tells me up here that I've got 8.21 gigabytes used out of my storage card which is 15 gigabytes total and my battery level has got three bars so the battery is full. Now we'll move to the second app screen page. Here we've got the exposure and this was actually a live preview here so you can adjust your exposure. If you're outside and it's very bright you may drop your exposure. If you're indoors and it's dark you might put your exposure up but typically we're on the neutral setting. Here's your white balance. You can do auto, sun, cl partly cloudy, cloudy, fluorescent, tungsten, and the mystery setting. <laughs> Typically, we leave our white balance on auto. Contrast, same thing. You have a live preview of the different contrast effects. Sharpness, we always have that at zero. Saturation. Once again, we're at neutral with all of these. HDR is a high dynamic range. So this is the blending between light and dark areas of your image. Low, medium, or high. We're always shooting on high HDR. So those are the two main app screen pages. Now there is also a flyout menu with settings, tools, and back to home. In the settings here, if we had a firmware upgrade, it would let us know here. We can format the card here. If for some reason our camera wasn't focusing, the autofocus wasn't working, we could calibrate it here. Wide angle allows us to take out any type of bowed corners. It tries to straighten up the image quite well. Rotate 180 is handy. Say we want to mount the camera upside down. It'll actually rotate and record the video in the proper orientation. LED indicator on or off, buzzer on or off, we leave those on all the time. Uh, the LED indicator blinks every five seconds when you're recording. Now we get into the recording schedule. This is where you set your timer. So if you want to record, say, from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., slide that on, go to 7 a.m., 
1700 is 5 p.m. Hit OK. And you could set that. If you also wanted to exclude Saturday or Sunday, you would turn on the weekly scheduler. Right now it's recording every day of the week. We can stop recording Saturday and Sunday. Oops. And set that. Burst length is when we'll get into when there, we get, mention the shooting modes, but this is for the video lapse mode. So it's a burst of video. We'll just remember that for later. Timestamp, we can turn a timestamp on, and you could even add your own custom text to the timestamp. But the timestamp, you can also change the position. So if you want a timestamp in the bottom center, you hit set, and the timestamp appears here. And the time is always synced to your device. So you should always have the right date and time. At daylight savings time, it is going to be an hour off, but once you link to it uh, again, the clock will be set correctly. Okay, back to the settings. Turn off the timestamp. Anti-flicker we leave alone. Wi-Fi password, you could change it from the default to whatever you want and reset if you wanted to reset everything to the factory default. Okay, so now we want to start a time-lapse project. We do have it set from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. And if we were recording for a week, a capture a minute would be a good time interval for about a week up to about a month. So this has a really handy information screen here that tells you all of the camera settings in one location. So you don't have to dig through all the menu items. Tells you the recording time is 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., the card storage space, the days that were, of the week that were scheduled, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Burst length doesn't apply to time lapse. Frame per second is 30, capture every minute, quality, resolution, tells me everything is correct here. So now if we want to start our recording, we select from the options down here. To start a time lapse, you'd hit the record button. It's going to bring up another confirmation, frames per second, interval, your time that you're shooting, and the days of the week. And I didn't mean to do that right there. So our recording started, the camera had a double beep, and now, well, it's a good time to show you how to stop the recording and reconnect. So now the camera is actively recording, and this light is blinking every five seconds. Okay, to stop a recording, Press and hold the power button. Now that activates the Wi-Fi. You can't connect to the camera when the recording is in process. So now I'm going to go back to my Wi-Fi network. There's camera one. Connects, connected, no internet. Go back to the app, back to the camera. Preview is here. Now the other record modes, PIR is starting recording in PIR. PIR is passive infrared, which is motion sensing. Snapshot mode is for a stop motion animation. If you start recording in that mode, you have to press the camera button in order to capture a frame. Hybrid is motion, PIR, and time lapse. So you could set up a time lapse to do every hour, and you'd have motion detection when there's motion that patches and passes in front of the camera. Video lapse, this is an interesting, more creative tool. So rather than taking time lapse with a frame every so often, you're taking a burst of video every so often. So back where we set the burst length of three seconds, you'd hit video lapse or you'd select your interval. Say every five minutes, you wanted a three second burst. So instead of building a time lapse frame by frame, you're building it with short video clips. Okay, so that's the basic features and the functionality of the camera. Now we get into a few more of the advanced features. One of the things the camera has is image alignment, which allows you to reposition the camera say if you take it down and change the battery. All we do is take a snapshot. Now I've got a snapshot stored. If I took the camera and I moved it, 
to change batteries or download from the card. I can go into Tools, Image Alignment. I can load the snapshot. I can select what color of a frame I want around here. I'm going to go with a three weight line. Then I turn on alignment. Now this builds a wireframe that I can just take and move the wireframe back into position so that my camera is perfectly lined up with where I left off the last time around shooting. So we have a seamless video. Very handy tool to allow you to remove your camera, take out the batteries, download the card, and replace it in the same position. The app under Tools, under Tools, the camera also has a handy time-lapse calculator where you can set the recording time, the time interval, frames per second, and it will calculate out your video length, video size. Now the camera also has the optical zoom lens. When you tap here, you can zoom using a slider, the lens. And you can actually hear the motor turning and the camera is zooming. Autofocus will kick in. And now the camera's focused perfectly. You can pinch the zoom here to verify your focus. It also has a manual focus feature and macro capabilities. So if I move this really close, I can either do autofocus here, or if I wanted to focus on a certain area, I could tap the plus and the minus to manually focus. But auto typically works very good if your subject is in the center of the screen. Now the nice thing about this is that we have full screen preview. I have to remove it from the stand. There's full screen preview. So you can pinch zoom here, adjust your zoom slider, as well as do your manual focus operations. That wraps up the overview. We will have some detailed videos coming out that show some specific aspects of the camera. But consider this uh, the operator's manual for the Afidus ATL200 from timelapsecameras.com. Thanks for watching.